back to Waterlands Stories from the World Race. This next story takes place in Siem Reap, Cambodia. In the 70s, Cambodia experienced a crippling genocide that completely devastated the community and pretty much wiped out the entire Christian community. And so it's really important in this nation to show the redemptive love of Jesus Christ. So members of N Squad were given the exciting opportunity to church plant in Siem Reap in partnership with the Adventures and Missions base called the Overflow Guest House. Right before N Squad arrived, a local pastor and computer teacher named Philip emailed them saying he was interested and needed some help church planning himself. Hello, my name is Philip, and I am a pastor in Siem Reap, Cambodia. And I started my own ministry since 2015. And I told them I have vision to build a church. So many people in this area don't have good relationship with Christians. I think I need to start to make relationship with them, to let them know about Christian life. I pray to the Lord that please uh, send foreigners come to my village to help us and to have this ministry to grow with this area. I really want to work with the rest team and, and feeling good and friendship with the rest team. At breakfast that morning, Paige was talking about how she felt led to bring her guitar with her. And so immediately God was like, all right, you need to go with her today. Like, this is what I have for you. And then Ashley said the same thing of like, she knew immediately she was supposed to go with Paige. So we all got together and prayed. I pray that we have increased sensitivity to your voice today. I saw a bunch of kids just playing around and then Ashley got a picture of a temple. We knew the direction to go. We run in the mornings, and so we had run that way the day before, and there was a school there and then a temple right next door. So we started walking, um, and Pastor Philip was with us. Something that we continued to say before we went out was to have eyes to see the people that would receive us. And so we were kind of taking a water break, kind of reconvening, see, seeing how we were feeling. There was this little boy across the street who would not stop yelling and screaming at us to come over and he kept yelling, hi, really loud. Hi, hi, hi. We kept saying, have eyes to see who would receive us. And so it's kind of like an obvious, like, yes, we should go over here. This is a sign from the Lord. We came over to his shop and his dad and mom were sitting there and his dad's name was Lucky Man. He was a dentist and a doctor and worked for IJM and or is a director at an orphanage and helps teach kids English and Khmer. He asks us to sing immediately a song about the Son of God. And he said to Paige, I know you're a Christian because you have a guitar. We were just like sitting there worshiping and that was kind of what the Lord told Grace, Paige and I that it was gonna be a part of that was worship. We were just like, how does he do all of this? He was talking about being an investigator um, with women in the bars. There's some people, they, they rape her, or some people, they sell her, sell the small children inside my country or outside my country. For my function, then I always cooperate with policemen to cut them to put in the prison. This is my job. He starts sharing his story with us, which is really, really incredible. <laughs> Lucky man means survive from, from, from the killing field. Yeah. Lucky man is uh, my nickname. When I stay in a refugee camp, and the foreigner, they give the nickname to me. In the year 1975, communists took over my country. Pol Pot took over my country. Everything in my country destroyed by the hand of the Khmer Rouge. Khmer Rouge, they want to kill me too. But Thai soldiers, they don't allow us to live inside their country too. Because they're thinking that we are Khmer Rouge too. But they pick up us from the border to the prison. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. And we pray to Him. Our Father in heaven, you a lot are God. If you are the really God, please you help bring us from the prison. Amen. Only two months later, you know, United Nations in Bangkok, they have heard about the good news. Yeah, like this also. They came. Cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. And so we sat there for about an hour and a half. Um, just talking to him and we shared that we were staying at the overflow right down the street and that we wanted to get him connected with them. Lucky man didn't know that it's a hostel full of Christians and so it was just like something really powerful hearing that that maybe there could be a connection of unifying the body that we're not supposed to be doing this alone. And Pastor Philip was sitting there listening and um, also trying to explain what all the things he was a part of. I'm feeling love for him and also want to work with him for ministry. It was really cool when they started talking back and forth and they were able to share um, where Lucky Man's school is, is actually near um, the land that Pastor Philip was given for potentially starting a church. I pray to the Lord for that, to, to meet him again and talk for the ministry. My friend, the new friend for me also. <laughs> Work together is very, you know, very strong. Like chopstick, you know, chopstick. Or if we have one chopstick like that also, they can break, yeah, like that also. Or if we have more chopstick like this also, yeah, together like that also, yeah, we are so strong. Yeah. Like the angle in the, in the cloud. We meet him today also, we are so happy. Yes. We work together for the poor and, and the people around in Cambodia. Sing for God. Thank Hi. You, Lord. <laughs>